Welcome to Get Started Investing. In this podcast, we cover all the basics that you need to start your investing journey. Are you joining us for the very first time? Is this the very start of your investing journey? Well, before you dive into this episode with us, our feed is designed to go from the very beginning. So we strongly recommend that you scroll up and start from episode one. However, if you are feeling brave and just want to dive in, then of course, don't let us stop you. Here at Get Started Investing, we unpack all the jargon and the confusing bits, hear your investing stories with the goal of making investing less interesting intimidating. And of course, we want to have a good time along the way. My name is Bryce. And as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Uh, excited for this episode. We've got, you know, we we thought we were doing well last year becoming published authors. Yes. We've got a two-time published author joining yeah. us today. Uh, double the knowledge, uh, double the experience. Um, uh, but we're covering a topic that I think is close to a lot of listeners' hearts. And yeah. it's definitely... Uh, one of the biggest areas of interest in the Equity Mates community, and that is ethical investing. That's it. It's our absolute pleasure to welcome Nicole Haddo to the to the studio. Nicole, welcome. Thanks so much for having you, me guys. So Nicole is the author of Smashed Avocado: How I Cracked the Property Market, and you can too. And uh, her most recent book, The Ethical Investor: How to Quit Toxic Companies and Grow Your Wealth. And that is what we're going to be discussing today, Uh, everything from why ethical investing through to some of the key practical ways that um, you can actually try to invest ethically. And uh, we were fortunate enough to sit down with Nicole, what was it, Nicole, 12, 18 months ago and and chat this through? Yeah, it was about 18 months ago. That's how long it's taken for me to get it out in the world. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's a great book and we'll um, we'll unpack it in in a moment. But uh, to kick off, we always like to start with a bit of a true or false game, Ren. We do. Uh, So, Nicole, uh, we like to go back to the very start of people's investing journeys and start with true or false, your very first investment has been your most successful. Well, it depends on how we're framing investments. My very first investment was an investment property um, and that uh, did well and helped me to take my next step. Um, If we're talking about shares and ETFs, um, I started with micro investing, started super small. um, But in the grand scheme of things, um, those investments um, did really well and, and I still have them. Nice. True or false, you had a strategy in place before you got started. Mostly true. Uh, So I came at this from the perspective of of writing a book um, and I interviewed a lot of people and had a good sense of what I needed to do to get started before I got started. Would I say that I had like a really, really structured strategy? No. Um, But yes, I uh, I did talk to a lot of people. So I felt reasonably confident when I got started. So Nicole, true or false, investing is as hard as you thought it would be. I think that's false. I can't believe how many amazing, uh, I guess, digital products are out there now that make it unbelievably easy to to enter the market, um, especially when you don't have a lot. I, I had it in my head before I started that I was going to need thousands of dollars to get started, and that wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. And to close out, Nicole, true or false, investing is like gambling. False. Nice. Um, unless unless you're being really, you know, unless you're just throwing money at things without thinking it through, I, I definitely would not be comparing investing to gambling. So, Nicole, uh, as Bryce said in the introduction where uh, you've just released your second book, The Ethical Investor, How to Quit Toxic Companies and Grow Your Wealth. Uh, so, we should start by saying congratulations, Um it's a big effort to get uh, a book out, and um, you should be you should be proud. And it's definitely an area of interest in the retail investor community in Australia: uh, ethical investing, sustainable investing. Um, so let's start with some definitions for people who may be new to the term. Uh, what is ethical investing? Well, ethical investing is is really just thinking about what what aligns with your values and. Your- and your morals and and what you believe in. I mean, ideally in a perfect world, you're probably not going to be investing in things that that you don't agree with. Um, So that's it in a a nutshell. Uh, A lot of the commentary around ethical investing at the moment is is strictly sort of quite heavily focused on fossil fuels. uh, And 
it, it's definitely far more than just fossil fuels. Obviously, that's a huge that's a huge area of interest for people who want to get ethical. Um, but it's so many things. It's gender diversity on boards. It's quality of supply chain. It's um, you know whether the people who work for the company are paid properly. Um, there are lots of ways to define what's ethical. And in your title of the book, you say how to quit toxic companies. So what, how would you define or in, in your mind, what is a, what is a toxic company? Uh, look, again, I think if people are thinking about toxic companies, they, they need to make that decision for themselves. But in my mind, a toxic company is a company that harms sort of the environment or, or people or broader society. Um, so companies that, that are working against um, a better future, essentially. So, Nicole, there's plenty of things to write books about in the investing world. Your your first uh, book was on property and it really followed your journey of, of getting into the property market. Why did you decide that ethical investing was a topic that you wanted to cover and what, why was now the right time to do it? So, when I finished Smashed Avocado or when Smashed Av- Avocado was published, I, I had my investment property, um, I was renting where I wanted to live, everything was pretty great uh, and then 2020 happened <laughs> um, and uh, when I was starting to think about this book, we were just coming out of the most horrific bushfires, a pandemic was starting and I thought, if I'm going to get into investing, I want to get into something that is I guess, you know, going to make a difference, hopefully. Um, The other thing that happened around that time was because of the pandemic, uh, my tenant actually moved out of my investment property uh, and it was sitting there empty and I decided to sell. And I had this realisation that a property, just one property, isn't a holistic strategy uh, and I wanted to look into how I could, I guess, diversify where my money was um, to build up that protection over time. And so, usually that would uh, involve then doing a bit of Googling and understanding a few investment strategies, but you embarked on writing a book to understand how you wanted to invest. Uh, What did you think about the ethics of investing before you started this sort of journey? To be entirely honest with you, I I didn't know a lot and coming from a journalism background, my instinct is always just to start researching and start talking to people and the more people I spoke to, the the more I realised that this was a really complex area but it was also something that people wanted to know a lot about. Um, So when I started, I, to be entirely honest, knew I wanted to know about it um, and I didn't know a lot. So I've taken people on the journey as I've learned which hopefully... um, makes it you know reasonably easy to to understand um but i I hadn't given it as much thought as i should have and now at this end of the process i am hugely passionate about it i just think there is you know there are so many great companies out there to invest in there are people doing great things i learned about a lot about superannuation which i'm sure we'll talk about shortly um I, i i just think everything you touch in terms of where your money is, um, has the potential to make a difference. Mm. So, we'll get into the, I guess, the how um, in, in a little bit and you step through not just investing in shares but investing in uh, a wide range of things including ethical property which I'm interested to understand a little bit more. But I guess before we get into the how, just um, I'd be interested in what your sort of big headline takeaways were um, around ethical investing, some of the big things you learnt that you maybe uh, think more retail investors should know about. Oh, look, there are so many things. I think the biggest takeaway for me was um, thinking about my super. So I had, to be quite honest, been pretty indifferent towards my superannuation. Um, you know, I'd had a lot of a lot of jobs. I I wasn't probably giving it as much attention as I should have. When I started looking into this, I called my existing superannuation provider and I asked them to tell me where my money was invested and they couldn't or wouldn't do it. It took me weeks to get my top 10 holdings. Um, and eventually, when I had that information, I realised I was invested in a lot of mining companies and big banks and it wasn't something that that I believed in at all. And this is this is my nest egg. This is my retirement nest egg. How can these companies not be giving this information to their customers and expecting 
want them to stay. Um, so that was that was probably the the biggest one for me. So Nicole, during the pr- the process of writing, is there anything uh, that you wish people knew more about when it came to thinking about ethical investing or even investing more generally? I think to begin with, the major one is that it it didn't take as much um, in terms of funding as I thought it was going to. Um, but also, I guess the other thing to consider from an ethical perspective is that it's really, really difficult to be perfectly, strictly ethical. Um, and so for me, I sort of got to a point where I thought, look, I'd rather move the needle a little bit than not try at all. Um, so I would absolutely say, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be finding these sort of perfect investments, especially if you're starting out with, say, ETFs, because that's that's a bundle of, of investments. And, you know, not every single company in, in that holding is necessarily going to meet strict ethics standards uh, but it's absolutely better to get started yeah we've certainly uh, come to understand through speaking with our community and on our own investing journeys as well that it's it is a quite a gray area when it comes to ethical investing at the moment and there's some awesome products available uh, for those that do want to but um, yeah you're right ethical investing means different things to different people and finding that pure form ethical investment is often um, sometimes a little difficult yeah, well, I, I think I would go a step further and say there's no perfectly ethical company. Yeah. There's always something that they could be doing better um, and it's it's a spectrum and mm. you've got to decide what's important to you. Mm. Um, and that's that's part of, uh, you know, we feature in the book uh, on a couple of pages and that, that's what we talk about. And Nicole steps through some examples there of companies that you would think are ethical um but you know there's always questions so Mm, mm. i think it's a it's a good reminder that we should always be thinking ethically but not letting perfection be the enemy of the good Mm. because it's tough to find perfection Mm. i think the reality is as well like the, the they're businesses they're they're there to make money um so you know while there are lots of businesses out there that that um want to be doing the right thing or do something well um they are also financially incentivized to uh, to you know to make that cash. So Nicole, before the ad break, uh, we spoke about the what what is ethical investing and and some of the challenges I guess in uh, f- figuring out what ethical investing means to you as an individual investor. Um, but the majority of your book, you actually get quite practical and and you can really you really step through some of the different ways that uh, people can. Uh, become more ethical in their investing and I think the thing I like about your book is that it's not investing in the narrow sense that Bryce and I often talk about here on the podcast which is investing in the stock market but you cover everything from you know micro investing to superannuation to even what bank you bank with. Um, So before we even get on to investing let's start with how you bank. Um, what what did you learn um, here and what should we be taking away and implementing in our own lives? Well, historically, we've really only had sort of the big four banks and because there wasn't a lot of choice, um, people just sort of, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I just ended up with the bank that my parents banked with um, I, and for a long time. I Yeah, I was a Dolomites kid and I've never left Commonwealth Bank since. <laughs> well, there you go. So, so my parents were ANZ customers, and and my bank account was set up, and I still have that bank account today. Um, certainly, looking at um, other alternatives to my banking. Banking can be really complex, especially if you've got a home loan. You can't necessarily just move. That's a whole other conversation. But the great thing is, there are some amazing players coming up in this. Um, uh, space of ethical banking now. There are there are banks that are staunchly opposed to things like climate change. Um, there are what's known as neo banks, so digital banks that are far more focused on the quality of the customer experience. Um, whereas some of the the bigger legacy banks are still uh, invest 
investing quite heavily in in things like fossil fuels or ventures that people might not necessarily agree with. So, um, you know, for example, if, if you're staunchly opposed to to climate change um, or or have a view on the fact that you know we're not doing enough about that, and you're banking with a bank that's still investing heavily in those ventures, um, that, that potentially is not aligned with with your values. Mm. So for people that may not be super in tune with all the new entrants in the space and may really only be familiar with the big four uh, banks, what are some names that uh, they may be interested in doing some more research on and deciding if they want to move banks? So one that's really interesting is um, Bank Australia, um, very, very outspoken um, in terms of climate change, doesn't invest in climate um, or in fossil fuel projects, does invest in renewables. Um, so lots to be excited about on that front. Um, then there are um, neo banks like UP. Um, the interesting thing with banks like UP is that they're really appealing to that sort of millennial Gen Z audience and they're ethical from the perspective of they want to help their customers do well. Um, so, for example, UP is a really interesting one. Um, they started purely just with bank accounts. Um, they they didn't uh, have home loans at the time that I've spoken to them. I think that might be in the works now, but their their priority isn't just taking their customers' money. Um, their priority is making sure that their customer is on a journey and when it does come time to borrow money, um, that they are well-placed and educated to do that. Um, so, so again, it's not just a climate change thing. Uh, it's it's about looking after the people that are, that are trusting you with their, with their money. Mm. There are plenty of... Uh new entrants in market offering a a service or a superannuation for uh, sustainability focused uh, superannuation accounts so what what can we do in this space given that it's such a large portion and, and can really move the needle the first thing i would say is to see if you know where your money is invested. Um, the, the thing that I found was that, A, I didn't know. And when I went to find out where my money was invested, they were withholding that information. Um, the logic kind of was, oh, this is sort of our our secret recipe. We don't want that information out in the world. That's just not flying anymore because there are ethical funds out there that will list every single holding in their portfolio transparently on their website in a couple of clicks. Um, so when I couldn't get that information out of my existing provider, I, I was like, well, I'm moving. Um, but the other great thing was I'm now far more engaged in my superannuation because I'm interested in the company that my fund invests in. Um, and, you know, I think, again, that's that, that's really exciting that, that you can be doing something that is, is compulsory for your financial future, but also making a difference in terms of where that money is going. Mm-hmm. So, Nicole, moving from the biggest investment we make to one of the smallest, uh, micro-investing, what should we know here and how can we invest, uh, micro-invest ethically? Well, uh, micro-investing is, you know, just as it sounds, I started with, you know, a couple of dollars here or there. I started with an app where I was rounding up my spending. So if I went and bought a $4.50 coffee, um, that extra 50 cents up to $5 was then invested in in, um, in one of my um, micro-investing apps. Uh, I guess the challenge is with, with those micro-investing apps is you're quite limited in terms of what you can invest in. Um, the ones that I have used uh, did have ethical options, um, but again, um, one was sort of one was a combination of two exchange traded funds, and and um, one was a managed fund. Um, you don't have a great deal of control over over what's in that, so you get the diversity and you get the education of how it's performing when you're starting out. Uh, but it's a lot more challenging if you are looking, um, you know, specifically for a certain kind of of ethical investment. So I spoke to um, uh, one woman uh, in the book who mostly invests in individual shares um, because she's really passionate about um, vegan and animal welfare products and. At this point, um, there, there really isn't an ETF that supports that. So again, you need to you need to be looking at whether that micro investing app is going to meet your ethical standards, um, or whether it's a good start to help you learn. Mm. Mm. 
So then moving to shares, what are some of the things we should know about di uh, investing directly in companies? And also, what are some of the best resources that you've found that uh, really help us figure out which companies can meet uh, your ethical standards? So in terms of shares, um, again, the challenge is, uh, to be honest, I have only invested so far in one individual company, and that was a bit of a punt just to um, just to have a go and see whether, whether I liked it. Um, the challenge with um, individual companies is there's a lot of time involved. So reading company reports, understanding the financial situation. Um, again, depending on what your ethical um, – individual share is it might be in an emerging market so my individual share investment is in hemp um, which might sound like a bit of a strange thing to be investing in but hemp um, is is being used uh, for a lot of environmental purposes um, so again it, that in itself is a challenge I want to invest in it because I've learned enough about it to think that you know there's potential in the hemp space but because it's emerging um, there's there's some risks associated with that mm, yeah now uh, Nicole one thing that I was very excited to uh, get to uh, when I was flicking through your book was uh, ethical property because it's not a term I've heard before um, and you know, you, you're a lot further on the property investment journey than Bryce and I. Uh, so for people that are also new to this idea of ethical property investing, uh, first of all, wh what is it? And then secondly, uh, what did you learn throughout the book? It, it's more about the thinking about the ethical components of um of property. So there's a couple of things for me. I'm really passionate about people being able to enter the property market. Um, so ethically, do I believe that it's right to have an investment portfolio with 20 properties in it? No, I don't. Um, that's my personal ethics. Um, I would like to see everyone who needs a house have a house. Um, so, you know, there are some ethical questions around the way that our property industry is structured generally. Um, but then it's the sustainability components. So uh, what is what is your house made of? Is it made of ethical materials? Uh, how much, um, you know, if you're building from scratch, what is the what is the climate impact of that? Uh, and then there's the running costs of the property itself. So um, in my case, uh, I bought a house that I'm I'm doing up. I'm trying to um, upcycle where I can. So there was old carpet in the property. Rather than getting rid of the carpet, I had it turned into a hallway runner and rug. That's a really small example, but a lot of people are, are going to great lengths to make sure that they're not. Um, you know, spending a lot on brand new things that are contributing to climate change from a supply chain and a construction uh, perspective. Um, and there are also, again, there are, there are banks and organisations that, that support people doing this. So, um, again, Bank Australia has a clean energy home loan um, and they actually do a reduction on the interest rate if your property is up to um, a certain standard in terms of solar power, um, battery power, that kind of thing. That's cool. There you go. Didn't know that. I don't know a lot about home loans though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Nicole, um, we've come to towards the end of the interview, so it's a, a great time to sort of uh, wrap it all up. So aside from obviously picking up your book and giving it a read and a, a reminder, it's called The Ethical Investor, How to Quit Toxic Companies and Grow Your Wealth. What are some uh, next steps that listeners should take if they really want to embark on that journey of uh, ethical investing? Oh, look, there's, there's so much you can do. Um, I would say as a starting point, there's a really good website called Market Forces, um, and that outlines how uh, the banks in particular um, are investing money in fossil fuels. So you might just want to have a look and see, you know, what, what your bank is doing and, and whether it's sort of um, worth moving over. Um, there are ethical financial advisors out there. Um, I've spoken to quite a few in the book. Um, the challenge with financial advice is it can be quite expensive, especially if you're starting out. Um, so it, it really is a case of, of doing your research Um uh, you know, Google was certainly my friend. It's it's not something that I relied on entirely, uh, but there's a lot of information out there about um, about ethical investments, uh, impact investing. I would I would say work out where where your 
you know, passion areas, whether it's, um, you know, another one of my interests is is aged care. So if you go, oh, I like aged care, what, what's happening in the aged care space? So working out what you, what you like and what's interesting to you and what's going to keep you engaged um, and, and seeing what's out there. Mm. So on that point, uh, you mentioned a couple of resources there, market forces, um, obviously, Googling uh, is always a great place to start. Um, for people who are interested in, um, you know, figuring out where their money's going, care about where their money's going, but feel a little bit overwhelmed by this whole challenge, um, what are some other great resources you came across when uh, writing the book? Um do you know there's a huge social media community out there um so again people who are talking about this sort of stuff on instagram aren't um usually financial advisors um but if you're treating it as inspiration and you're getting a sense of of what people are talking about i'm i'm really quite stunned by this movement of of people looking to divest their money from things that they don't believe in and and just generally have conversations about it i mean you know let's let's flip it over you guys i know that you have some interest in in ethical where do you go good question that is a very good question i i um where do I go? Well, I think where I first start looking is a lot of these fund managers who claim to be or who say that they have ethical funds or a lot of the um, a lot of the ETF providers who have ethical funds as well. I often like sort of looking under the hood for those providers and actually understanding how they what they classify as ethical investments and looking at the companies and having a bit, a bit of an understanding of how they might differ between the two because, as we said right at the top, um, how one fund or firm defines ethical could be completely different to the other and then um, and then I sort of go from there. But, yeah, it's... it's, it's I think that's, that's probably... Um, that's probably the other point worth making is there's there's not there's no regulation around sticking an ethical or a sustainable label on a financial product. Yeah. So uh, people really need to be aware of that and go in with their eyes their eyes wide open. I initially did look into to an ETF um, that was labelled sustainable um and it it absolutely wasn't even close to to meeting my standards so you know that's the concept of 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 greenwashing where people are aware that people want to invest ethically um but they really need to um you know not take that at face value absolutely Mm. yeah i think uh well as some of our listeners may know i uh i'm pretty opinionated uh and so (laughs) i have a pretty uh i have a pretty good idea of uh, some of the ethical things that I care about and some of the things that are not as important to me. And so the first step for me is always looking at the company themselves. And there's so much information these days on a company website, their annual report, investor presentations. More and more companies are now doing sustainability reports, which is great to see. Um, and there's always the risk of greenwashing. You know, a company is never going to come out and say we're terrible on climate and um, <laughs> if you care about climate, you shouldn't invest in us. So, like, you do have to take it with a grain of salt. But there's a lot of great information there and it's a really great starting point. Um, so, for me, it's, it's you know, having a pretty good – like, having a pretty clear idea on what I think is important and uh, then looking at the companies themselves um, – and really going from there. I mean, we're in a very privileged position that we get to speak to a lot of ethical fund managers as well and Mm. you start to really see where different uh, people diverge in their thinking and then when there's like really clear ideas, um, a big big divergence that we see is in some fund managers are willing to work with companies and are willing to accept if a company has a bad starting point but is working to get better, then they can be considered ethical because they're trying to do the work and trying to be better. And then other fund managers just have blanket rules around, you know, you're either good or you're bad and we don't care if you're getting better. Once you're better, then we'll consider you. And there's no right or wrong approach. But again, that's a that's a big one that we see, um, at, you know, I guess people need to make their own decision about where they fall on, on that decision. Mm. Mm, I think I think the more the more you learn about it, the more you realise there is that kind of screening where some sometimes it's just like a, a, a blanket okay it's a, it's a negative screen we're not we're not investing in in this if it has X Y Z but then there are those that are going over and beyond and they have that expectation that it does 
a, a, a list of things um, that get it into that ethical space. So there's there's sort of, you know, bottom of the barrel, yeah, okay, it's not an evil company, so therefore it, it gets in. Uh, and then it's the ones that are, that are really trying to do their best in, across a number of areas. Mm-hmm. So, Nicole, final question uh, before we wrap You know, is there uh, any advice that you would give yourself knowing what you know now uh, back before you started writing this? Or is there any advice that you'd really like to pass on to close out to the Get Started Investing community? Oh, look, the first thing, the piece of advice I would have given to myself would have been to call my super fund about 10 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I I, I just really um, am am quite frustrated with myself that I I hadn't been um, paying close enough attention. And and I would encourage your listeners to call their super provider. I'm assuming that even if some of your listeners aren't um, advanced in terms of their investing, that they would have a super fund. Um, And that's a really good starting point to work out, you know, whether you're happy with the ethical performance of of that fund and and where your retirement money is invested. Um, And again, as we've just discussed, understand the concept of, of of greenwashing because there isn't that regulation in terms of of putting those labels on products. Um, you you really need to do your research, um, but importantly, you need to work out whether it's whether it's ethically a- aligned for you. I might be investing in things that you guys say, oh, no, that doesn't really make the cut for me. Um, that that's okay. Like it, ethics are personal, um, so you you just need to work out where. You- your ethics lie uh, and, and what you can invest in that, that is aligned with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ethical uh, or not, we think that everyone should uh, pay closer attention to their superannuation because uh, it's such uh, an important part of uh, your financial uh, life. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that advice there. Now, before we go, just a reminder to our community that if you have taken a lot of value from this conversation or from the Get Started Investing podcast, uh, we would really appreciate it if you could just pass it on to someone else who you think needs to learn more about ethical investing or perhaps uh, needs to know more about uh, investing in general and would like to start their investing journey and uh, wants a community to talk about it. So that would be greatly appreciated. But Nicole, a massive thank you and also a congratulations on launching the book. Uh, We will include uh, a link to the book in our show notes. It's called The Ethical Investor, How to Quit Toxic Companies and Grow Your Wealth. And uh, yeah, look, it's uh, a topic, as Ren said at the start of the show, that's incredibly important to us and uh, to the Get Started and Equity Mates community. So we thank you for sharing your time uh, this afternoon. Thanks so much, guys. Love your work. Uh, Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Nicole.